as Bill insists, we're all buddies. animals, we're both human and canine, be subservient to him and sit at his feet when they are around him. Not fair. Not the reason, fair. reason why, why Gilstrap's chair is lower than Bill's <laughs> in the studio. You can't tell. We make it up with the camera angles. Uh, in studio with us right now, a couple of friends of the program here, Donna Tissue, Kathy Hefner from the uh, Jefferson County Animal Welfare Society. Good to see yes. you folks. Welcome Good back. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. A nice little break from politics, which we just, uh, finished with the primary election on May the 14th and this opens up our calendar a little bit so we can work a few things in like uh, this uh, right now welcome back thank you for having us with you again and giving us this opportunity to talk about our mission which is saving animals yeah absolutely and <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago your, your shelter was featured during puppy bowl it was. Uh, we had the opportunity to join Puppy Bowl again this year, but unfortunately, we did not have any puppies available. Oh, no we only kidding. had adult dogs. And Puppy Bowl was a great opportunity for us, but it's really a hassle, um, you know, to transport the puppies to the location they have to go to and to be there all day. And it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. um, but we just did not have any puppies available to do it. That's probably year. a good thing. Yep. <laughs> it I, I is hope. in some ways, yes. The the disadvantage is that most people who come to shelters to adopt dogs want puppies. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, a lot of the older dogs get overlooked, and people want the cute little fuzzy puppies who are going to lick them in the face and jump all over them instead of the nice, calm, sedate older dogs who actually have some manners. Yes, the scratch on my head is from my son's puppy who uh, just visited this weekend. There you go. Yeah. That can happen. What kind of population do you have right now at the shelter? We are at full capacity at the shelter right now with both dogs and cats. That means around how many? Well, we really only have capacity for 10 dogs at it, that's the best case scenario mm -hmm. you know we can maybe get a few more in there but we don't like to and cats i'm not sure exactly how many cats we have we probably have like 30 cats in the shelter right now maybe even more um, because it is kitten season and we've been overrun with kittens mm -hmm. that's you know? everywhere everywhere just about every shelter that i know of in the area is at capacity right now what's the age range of the dogs that you have in uh the age range of the dogs right now goes from less than a year we do have one puppy who's about six months old he's a little pit bull mix um but then we have dogs who are up to i think seven and we have scout who's with me today she actually is my dog oh, um, nice. but scout is a rescue uh, and I met her at an event that the Animal Welfare Society hosts every year, and that's the Bark in the Park. Yes. Which is what we're here to promote today. When is Bark in the Park this year? Bark in the Park is Saturday, June the 1st from 10 to 1. What is Bark in the Park? Bark in the Park is an event where people can bring their dogs and have fun. It is a fundraiser for us, but we like to call it more of a fun razor yeah, of course because it's all about having fun with your dogs and giving back to the community and letting them have an opportunity to try things with their dog that maybe they haven't tried before and how does bringing your dog to the park raise money for the welfare society there is a ten dollar registration fee per dog mm -hmm. and your dogs have to be current on their vaccines of course um but like i said it's not one of our biggest fundraisers we don't raise that much money for, from the event it's more about letting people just enjoy a day with their dogs or a morning we don't do the whole day anymore because it gets too hot in the afternoon for sure. most dogs to handle that Billy? yeah uh good morning ladies i have a couple of questions one what's the difference between a uh welfare shelter and humane society Humane shelter uh welfare society humane society. and the humane society the humane society of the u.s is actually a national organization okay and there are some shelters that use humane in their name doesn't necessarily mean they're affiliated with the humane society nationally um and, but we are not affiliated with them at all and we are not affiliated with the county uh jefferson county animal control we are a private shelter is that, there a humane society in jefferson county not that i okay, know of so the ones where, now you're a no kill shelter is that right that is correct you mentioned that the uh you have dogs up to seven years of age mm -hmm. uh the dogs are older than that what happened to them 
if dogs are older than that we keep them you just keep them we, now we there have been some arrangements several years or so ago that you would transfer dogs to berkeley humane society and berkeley does even though they they are very compassionate they do have a uh agreement with the veterinarian to put on, put the dog down i'm not sure if that it may not exist that, anymore but that, I know it, it doesn't exist be. now okay. uh the only um experience we have with berkeley county right now is more in taking animals from them is that right? because okay. they are a yeah. kill shelter and yeah. we will often if we have mm-hmm. you know we're not at capacity we will accept animals from other local rescue groups and we accept animals from jefferson county animal control which is physically located really close to us and a lot of times they're asking us to please you know give this dog a chance it's really adoptable can you take them into your shelter and maybe get a little bit more exposure for them? And we will do that with them and Berkeley County as well. I'm sure there's a different story for every animal, but on average, if there is such a thing, how do the dogs get to you? Are these lost dogs? You say you're not affiliated with animal control. So are these right. lost dogs get picked up? Are they people that just realize they can't handle the dog? Or how, some what are their stories? Some of both. Um, unfortunately, we do see a lot of people who tell us that for some reason or another they can no longer keep their animal uh, sometimes it's for financial reasons unfortunately sometimes it's because they're moving to a new location that won't accept dogs um, or health they have or, or or health reasons you know sometimes people get older and have some health concerns the people's health or the animal's health or both sometimes it can be both um, we do try to you know we do have a surrender fee it's called you know if people bring their animal to us they do have to sometimes pay a fee um and we we do another thing that jefferson county animal welfare society is trying to do is make sure that people when they adopt a dog they're well suited to that dog and the breed so that we do a little bit of research and make sure that people come to the shelter anyone who is in the household has to come to the shelter and meet the dog if they have other pets they have to bring their pet to meet the dog to make sure there's going to be a proper fit because we don't want animals coming back to us you know we will accept animals back if someone adopts and it doesn't work out but that's a worst case scenario and it's not good for the animals you know we want to make the best situation for them that we possibly can well one of my concerns about just kind of get this out front i Mm -hmm. i huge dog lover and one of my concerns about adopting from a shelter would always be the emotional baggage that comes with the dog i mean however whatever their uh however they got there it's it's a traumatic event that led to the shelter and then it's another traumatic event to leave that home such as it is and then come into a new home Correct. and a dog can do a lot of damage in a very short period of time <laughs> right so uh and that's and that's just a concern right to in, in dealing with the emotional issues dealing with the dog how do you how do you get past that? That That's always a concern. And we do have a, I'm a board member and the board for Animal Welfare Society, we are unpaid. We're strictly volunteer, uh, but we do have a paid staff, you know, of six to eight people at any given time. And we have a really good manager and it's their responsibility to work with the dogs and try to make sure that they are adoptable and that whatever emotional baggage that they have, you know, they work with them. They're there every day even on days that they're not open the staff is still there they have to take care of the animals and feed and clean and so the animals are getting socialized and worked with on a daily basis but isn't that potentially a zero-sum game that if you have dogs that are not adapt adoptable and in short order you'd be filling up your shelter you'd not be able not able to take another dog but yet you said earlier that you would keep a dog until either adopted or the dog would die one of the two that is the case in a no-kill shelter um unfortunately it's a sad reality that sometimes right now we have two dogs and scout would like to speak for them because she's a husky mix and we have two husky mix dogs in the shelter right now and they're both beautiful dogs and they're fairly young dogs at this point but the one dog has been there for over 400 days so that's more than a year and a lot of times what can happen to the dogs when they're living in a shelter environment for that extended period of time is they can regress 
and and become more reserved and so people will overlook them when they come into the shelter um but yeah we do turn animals around you, you know we try <laughs> that that's our mission is to make sure we find homes and it's pretty rare that we do get them that stay there for that extended period of time. Yeah, uh, Picking up on the point that John made, and I'm also very conscious of the emotional baggage that some of the dogs can have. Uh, a few years ago, uh, my wife and I were visiting friends in Norfolk, and they had two of the most beautiful uh, 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 retrievers, not retrievers, uh, uh, well, for the dog, but they were beautiful animals and just as friendly as could be. As we got ready to go to bed at night, though, uh, the owner said, "Do not leave your bedroom." These dogs were abused, and after dark, they're very, very aggressive and stay inside your bedroom. Now, at that stage, I could stay inside my bedroom all night. Now, be, now I wouldn't visit. Was there a restroom <laughs> attached to your bedroom? No, there, there was a dog between me and the restroom. That was the problem. But That's anyway, not a good situation. <laughs> we'll so put a kitty litter box in there for him. What do you want? <laughs> so, but anyway, that, the, that image has stayed with me over the years. And it's an Irish setter that I was trying to think of, mm. a couple of Irish setters, which are kind of emotional dogs anyway a high strung dog but so beautiful so gentle so mild dogs. until evidently the light went out at night and because of the, their inherited emotional baggage they got from being in a shelter now there are trainers out there who yeah. work with dogs mm -hmm. with emotional instability mm -hmm. and i we would, should try that john sometime. <laughs> <laughs> i would suggest that you two might be candidates that's what i'm talking about the two of us i, I didn't i already <laughs> wear the shock collar you gave me <laughs> i didn't well, bring that's any contact a, all kind of images there <laughs> exactly. i wish i hadn't heard that <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, uh, Scout is... Uh, I'm sorry, Rob's going to take over the conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> we have been cut off. <laughs> what age was Scout when you got Scout? I met Scout seven years ago at the Bark in the Park event. At that time, I was not working with the Animal Welfare Society as a board member. I was just a volunteer. Okay. And I would go to the Bark in the Park event because I was between dogs. My husband and I have had three dogs in our lives, and this is the third. And at that time we were had lost our second dog sure you know and we'd been without a dog for a couple of years so i would make a point of going to places like petco or you know <laughs> and and horn in on other people's dogs because i felt like i was getting ready to maybe want a dog again in my life and we went to the bark in the park and the bark in the park is uh like i said it's an event for people and their dogs we will have some vendors there selling products some of which are dog related some are not and there will also be other rescue groups there it's not just for animal welfare society it's for other rescue groups and morgan county animal shelter was there with this lovely dog mm -hmm. and she was very quiet and very reserved and had her tail between her legs and you know i i felt like she looked like a former dog friend that I had had in the past. And I was like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. But she didn't interact with me very much. But I kept going back over the four hour period and visiting with her. And when I woke up the next morning, I was thinking about her. And I talked to my husband and he wasn't thinking about her, unfortunately. <laughs> but I talked to him and Monday morning rolled around and I was still thinking about this dog. So I called the shelter to see if she was still available and we went to visit her at the uh, Morgan County Animal Shelter. And we're there and the dog is sticking to me like glue. Finally, she's interacting with me and she, we're walking around the building and she's hanging on to me like she was a champion healer, you know? And I looked down at her and I said, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not the one you have to impress. It's <laughs> that guy with the mustache. Now, I don't know if she understood exactly what I was saying or if she just read my heart but the next thing I know, she's healing to my husband <laughs> and following him around the rooms of the shelter. So we talked about it the next day, and I said, look, I want her to be mine. And we came to an agreement, and the husband said, okay. <laughs> because, you know, that saying about happy life, happy Your wife. wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we wound up on, we had met her on Saturday, and the following Friday we went to adopt her. Well, she must be very smart. Well played, she Scout. Is, yes, I know. <laughs> and she has him well trained to this day. I'm you sure. You keep referring to Bark in the Park. Which park? That takes place at Jefferson Memorial Park in Charlestown. 
it's a, on the south end of town. It's a uh, almost 12 acre park. They have a pool and tennis courts and they have a very nice walking trail. And on this Saturday morning or June 1st, Saturday morning, we take it over and we have an interactive dog walk which allows the dogs to try things like jumping through hoops and a weave, you know, do the weave poles if they've never done that. Um, and then we play a lot of games. We play games with the dogs. And, okay, Donna. I know, <laughs> Donna's like, okay, it's almost my turn to be up. Remember the Puppuccino Challenge? Puppuccino Challenge. The Puppuccino mm-hmm. Challenge. What is the Puppuccino Challenge? The Puppuccino Challenge is one of our most popular games. And it is a test a test of agility, speed, endurance of the tongue. Yes, you heard me, the tongue. It is to determine who has the quicker liquor. And it is a test between man and dog. We give you a cup of whipped cream and one for your dog. And then we see who can lick it up the fastest. That's gotta be no contest. The dog's gotta win that every time. You'd think so, Yeah. but it doesn't happen. I mean, sometimes, sometimes the people win. Yeah. Sometimes the dogs will look at it and like, what yeah, are you doing me? Like? Yeah. <laughs> Not my dog. That's unfortunate dogs who have never had whipped cream. That wouldn't be my dog. My dog can hear the whipped cream canister move in the refrigerator. Okay. I saw a slow motion video of a dog drinking water. And what I was fascinated to see was that they actually go underneath the tongue and scoop, whereas we would go right. under and up. Right. They go under and the, down the, the tongue actually curls backward yeah yes that is fascinating if you've never seen that if your listeners have never seen that they need to google that a slow-mo dog drinking water because it's fascinating the tongue actually curls backward and pulls the water up into their mouth right. and they have a flat yeah. tongue as well a flat tongue yes mm-hmm. for dog. What, what what shape is no, yours? Okay, I told all I know about I, it. <laughs> but dogs suppose that's why they can drink so easily and get some something off the floor. They have a flat tongue as opposed to a curved tongue. Oh, okay. Now I don't know more about the physics. Or a fork tongue. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what did you mention about going to PetSmart? What, what is your opinion of, uh, I don't know if we still see these because there's not as many malls as there used to be, but back in the days when people went to malls all the time, there was always a pet store in there where they had puppies and kittens and, and whatever as opposed to shelters. Uh, I'm not going to disparage those people or breeders. Um, there are a lot of reputable breeders out there, um, but my option is always going to be adopt, not shop. Um, and clearly i'm with the animal welfare society and that's where i want people to go (laughs) i want them to go there and shop for kittens and dogs um but you know like i said there are a lot of reputable breeders and i know donna did you get your dog you got quinn from a breeder my husband her husband his dog from a breeder Mm -hmm. i'm a come closer to your mic donna i'm an adopt one Mm I but get secondhand ones. He wanted a specific breed of dog, and and he does show his dog. Yes. Um, but yes. Will, I, you, will you have all your dogs out from the shelter at the Bark in the Park? We will have. It's a, a matter of staffing and getting the dogs there, but we will have at least three dogs from the shelter on site, and we will be featuring them, you know, and hopefully there are at least several other rescue groups who are going to be on hand. So if anybody wants an opportunity to meet one of our dogs and our shelter um, is open Wednesday through Saturday 11 to 4 and Sunday 11 to 2 we're located at 23 Poor Farm Road in Kearneysville and that is close to the Jefferson County Fairgrounds Mm -hmm. and this will not be an adoption event per se but you can meet these dogs there and hopefully somebody will spark interest like Scout sparked my interest when we were there can you go on your website and see all the dogs and cats that of, are there? Of course you can. Uh, the website would be awsjc.org. And we also feature our pets on Pet Finder. But if you look on Pet Finder, you have to be sure you're looking for a uh, Animal Welfare Society of Jefferson County, West Virginia, because apparently there are other shelters out there called Animal Welfare Society. <laughs> now, at the shelter, how much a uh, dog association do you do? Dogs working among the dogs? Like I said, the shelter staff works with them on a daily basis. But the and dogs work uh, as, as a group play, or do they stay pretty much independent of each other? 
they have individual runs, um, but then there's another part of the yard where they can get out and, you know, play together if they are dogs that like other dogs. Not all dogs do. I, that's the point I was <laughs> driving at, because, and you're talking about taking them to the park. A lot of dogs are aggressive with other dogs, so how do you right. filter that out? We trust people to know their own dog. For instance, Scout is dog selective, so she was at the dog park you know when i met her but she does not go to the bark in the park with me because i can't trust her around other dogs um so we we trust the owners you know people know sure. you know usually you know your own dog and know whether or not they're going to interact and you know they know that this is going to be a place where there may be hundreds of dogs and you know we, we trust that and of course you will have to sign a waiver as part of your registration you know that if something happens while you're there and if you don't have a dog you can still come and you can still donate mm. will you have cats there too uh we will not have cats there but there may be other rescue groups that have cats there you mentioned you have about 10 dogs in your shelter and about 30 cats. Yes. Is it that much more difficult to adopt a cat than it is or to find people who want to adopt a cat versus a dog? It's not, but cats just breed like you wouldn't believe. I, I read a statistic that talked about a single cat and how many cats they can produce over like a seven-year period if you have one unspayed female who then has kittens and they can have kittens three or four times a year they can produce something like sixty-seven thousand cats yeah you jo know. wow joanne overton at the berkeley county humane society a few years ago started a very aggressive spade your cat program i don't know if they're still doing it or not but they they spend a lot of time a lot of effort do you do anything like that toward cats or an organized spay and spray in the cat you, you cannot adopt an animal from us that is not spayed or neutered okay. every animal will be spayed or neutered when they leave the facility mm -hmm. is it possible can people if if somebody wants a beagle or a labrador retriever can they put in an alert hey if you get a beagle in call me we don't really operate that way um, you can of course contact the shelter manager uh, and let her know that you're looking for something like that but we really try to be very specific about um, interviewing people and making sure that it's a good fit. Um, so if you're looking for a beagle and we might, have, we might find one, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be the first person in line to right. get the beagle. If there's someone else who's a better fit, who is going to give that dog a better home and more active you know, uh, engagement, then you may not get it. I used to live in Fairfax, and the, the, whatever the animal shelter was, would bring, periodically on a nice day, would bring out a bunch of dogs and, and the staff, and they'd set up in front of the grocery store on a weekend. Mm -hmm. And everybody would, the kids could, could play with the dogs, and they'd set up little cages, you know, not cages, but like play pens where kids could get and interact. They got rid of a lot. There are a lot of giveaways on those events because once once your kid bonds with the dog, <laughs> you're going home with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> and I always thought that was a very effective way to to make things move. And then there were some dogs. It was really interesting to watch. There were some dogs that were otherwise very attractive. They weren't aggressive. That just didn't have that X factor. That nobody seemed to want to mm -hmm. go and and pet i don't know what that is but you, you yeah. feel sorry for them obviously but. if we could figure that out we would have a much bit easier time you know adopting and matching these pets with prospective owners but sometimes it happens you know like the the husky mia that i mentioned who's been in the shelter for over mm -hmm. a year she's a beautiful dog she looks very similar to scout and she's really nice and sweet and lovable but for some reason she just gets overlooked and i don't know sometimes the dogs do not always show themselves at their best when they're in the shelter because the shelter can be a very chaotic and hectic environment when someone comes in and the first dog starts barking then they all start barking <laughs> and then they all start bouncing off the walls because they're all hyper so maybe you're not seeing the dog at its best mm -hmm. so I, I tell people that all the time when they go to a shelter give the animals a chance if you see one that is attractive to you and you think you might like it arrange with the shelter to have a private meet and greet so that's where you take the dog out of the cage and then you get to spend some private time with it and interact with it on a personal basis and then you really know what the dog is like or you have a better idea of what the dog is going to be like 
you know, for you and your family. And yeah, we, we will go to a lot of these events and show some of our animals, but we don't really like to do adoption in that kind of situation because we want to make sure it's a good fit and we want to make sure that everybody in the household is coming to meet the animal and yeah so that's our policy that's how we do it we don't adopt on same day adoption events donna and kathy we are just about out of time uh, before we do that uh, if you could tell us again when the bark in the park is and as kathy mentioned or donna uh, mentioned earlier how to make a donation to the jefferson county animal welfare society Thank you. Yes, the Bark in the Park is June the 1st, Saturday, 10 to 1, at Jefferson Memorial Park in Charlestown. And you can go on our website and donate through that uh, website, awsjc.org. We have a list on there of things and items that we need, or you can just donate money that way. Okay. Can we get Scout to make an appearance? Can Scout, Scout stand up? Scout, can you stand up? Get Scout snout on screen. Come here, Scout. The scout snout. Come here, Scout. <laughs> She's headed scout for Scout likes door. Bill a lot. <laughs> can you see her? Scout's my buddy. Is that little, better? Yeah, oh, good. Just a little to your left. A little to your left. To my left. Yeah, there you go. There's hey, Scout. Scout. All right, Scout. Scouty. That's Scout. Good job, Scout. Ah, beautiful dog. Thanks so much for bringing Scout by. Scout was happy to be here. Yeah, she slept most happy. of the time at Bill's feet. <laughs> <laughs> but she was happy to have the opportunity. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Hey, buddy. Here's Scout, old Scoutster. Yeah, very nice. <laughs>